Mark Scar on the Scar Card on 103.7 The Fox. And I'm proud to welcome in Chuck Wright to talk about Sheltering Sky. Chuck, welcome. Hey, good to be here. Nice to nice to talk to you. Nice to meet you. Congratulations on Sheltering Sky. Thanks. You know, I, I never intended on doing a solo album. I just uh, took a bad situation or a horrible situation, which was the global pandemic, and just started composing music again. In my past, I've been a, a writer with Quiet Riot and House of Lords. And if I was in a band, I usually contributed for the most part and um, other projects that I've done and produced and all that. So I just decided to sit down and started writing music just for art's sake. You know, I didn't have an agenda. And, uh, I wasn't planning on this, and I ended up with five tunes, and I made a cool video for a Bjork cover I did of Army of Me, which I know is unexpected for somebody like me. But And then I realized, wow, I think I have something. And I got uh, Cleopatra signed it, and uh, so I continued on, and I have a love and song album. It wasn't a plan. That's why it's so diverse. I was going to say, um, not to pigeonhole or anything, Chuck, but probably people are going to be surprised and pleasantly so about what they're going to find on here. And you involved everybody. My goodness. There's like 40 guests on this, and it's a product, I'm sure, of being in the industry a long time and getting along with a lot of folks. Yeah, you know what? I have a, a lot of friends. There are 41 guests. I got guys from Mr. Big, Skid Row, Tesla, Dream Theater, James Addiction, Asia, Jefferson Starship, a couple of killer solo artists, Alan Hines, um, Toshi Nagi, who you see on Jimmy Kimmel every day. He's a great guitar player. And um, I do this event in Hollywood that I started in 2015 called Ultimate Jam Night, and I coordinate between 40 and a hundred different professional musicians mm. through that I've met a lot of people and discovered some great talent and one being a, a female vocalist named Whitney Ty she's actually on three songs and co-wrote a song with me and I brought her in to do the Army of Me song and um, we just are like best friends now it's it's been great but through that social kind of hang and that's why I started it because DJs were taking over in Hollywood and the musicians needed a place and so I started this thing and it became super popular and it still is I just can't do it as often as I was doing it because I'm, I've been out of the country a lot this year. But um, yes, indeed, there are a lot of great performances on the album, and um, it covers like such a wide range of styles. It's hard rock, funk, prog rock, jazz fusion. I've even have a folk gospel like Robert Plant, Alison Krauss kind of song on there, and there's even a Celtic piece on there, which is a song I've always wanted to do since I was a kid. Uh, it came out in the late 60s by a band called The Young Bloods. It's a song called Darkness, Darkness. Um, which has always resonated with me. It's something I pick up a guitar and I'll start playing it. So I eventually recorded it. I've got three drummers doing tribal drums and uh, fiddle. It would work in the movie Braveheart, for instance, if you listen to it. So, yeah, it's a pretty eclectic record, and people are being surprised when they check it out, indeed. Talking with Chuck Wright, and Chuck, I know, too, that this should come as no surprise for people who listen to the record, is that you in the past have been involved not only in, in rock music, but also some cinematic music as well, and it kind of, I think it shows itself off a bit here, too, don't you think? I do, and you know, um, my secret weapon, <laughs> I should say, on, on, I think, like five tracks on this, I have a, a really good friend uh, named Tim Jansons, who's an award-winning film composer. He's also uh, an amazing cinematographer and editor and all these other things but an engineer he co-produced five of the songs with me and and i have a film scoring background and he's an award-winning film composer so there's a lot of depth and a lot of the songs so it kind of has the feel of the album is like a concept album even though it's real it's not but it kind of has that vibe to it when you listen to it and i also like bookended the album with uh, a song called way to silence mm -hmm. so there's two completely different versions of the song and actually that song was the first one I wrote when the pandemic hit and I was looking around the world, seeing all the empty cities. It totally felt apocalyptic. So I wrote this song and um, I put it out myself just as an acoustic piece. And Troy Laketa from Tesla reached out and uh, said it would sound good with drums on it. So he recorded some drums and another friend, uh, Alan Hines, who's a, uh, a great jazz fusion guitar player, sent me some soloing and I edited it all together. And I reached out to Derek Sheridan from Dream Theater. And um, there's a, an, a great flamenco guitar player named Ben Woods, who we just actually just lost a couple weeks ago. But he's he's playing on it. So, you know, I put that out. And to my surprise, right when my album came out, that song won Best Instrumental and Best Video, because um, I edited together a video myself for the song at the Rock Music Alliance Awards. And it was presented by Tony K of Yes. So and that was a surprise. And now I found out I'm uh, up for a Grammy of consideration. Well, congratulations. I didn't plan for all this to happen. I'm so proud of 
of the record, though. It's really my legacy more than something that came out in the early 80s, you know, that became big. But this is more about what I'm about musically. Talking with Chuck Wright, and I wanted to put people's attention on the track Throwing Stones because I know that's a, a very important cause for you right now. Yeah, the song Throwing Stones is pretty timely. It's a uh, anti-war piece, basically, and the lyric and the actual vocal parts were all put together by my friend Joe Retta, who was in a band called Heaven and Earth with me, and he sang with TSO and Sweet and Dio Disciples, great vocalist. But on this one, the, the song's been compared to Primus meets Stevie Wonder. The message in it is how long will it take before we know and learn that war is not the answer. And as human beings, when we were first put on this planet, we started by throwing stones at each other to get our way, and now we're launching missiles, throwing grenades. It's just when are we going to learn and uh, what's going on with Ukraine and Russia and other parts of the world too I mean things are just it seems like we're spinning out of control again you know there is being some I, I would assume monies that if somebody purchases the song or the record some of that money will go toward the efforts in Ukraine what I did was is I, I did an event with um, Ultimate Jam Night where we raised money for uh, World Central Kitchen, and that's where the money goes to, for the refugees uh, from Ukraine. And we actually had a family that had their home bombed out um, in Bucha, and they actually came down to the show, and and the the whole family got on stage, and the father spoke for a bit, and their little seven-year-old daughter sang We Are the World to the crowd. It was a pretty emotional evening. This was uh, the first couple months of the war when things were, when they were attacking Kiev and and, uh, Kiev, I should say, Kiev's the uh, Russian pronunciation. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, yeah, I've been keeping track of that whole situation, and I don't know if people know people from Ukraine, but man, everybody I've ever met from there has just been wonderful. It's just, it's so hard to see this. I mean, it'd be hard anywhere in the world, but it's just watching this desolation every day. It's just, a, you know, it's a land grab, and it's, it's terrible. And it's affecting, you know why? That's, it's affecting the whole world's economy. Anyway, I don't want to get political because that's, you know, that's not what this album is. It's it's a lot of different things. So, uh, you know, everybody should give it a listen. Well, with Chuck Wright, we're talking about Sheltering Sky. Let's talk about and tell me about the track uh, Giving Up the Ghost, which has also been a single. That's my most recent single. I I mean, I came out of the box kind of with a couple harder things because people kind of know me from playing with Alice Cooper or Quiet Riot or House of Lords or whatever. And so I thought it was important to, to come out doing that and then um i wanted to show the other side of the album which is a really the album's actually pretty mellow except for a few songs it's uh, moody um that's uh, giving up the ghost is a song I've, I've held inside for a very long time and you know i'll pick up the guitar and i'll usually like end up noodling around with it and it was really nice to finally get it out and basically lyrically it's about letting go of a relationship or whatever of something that is holding you back in this instance, it's about somebody that was in love with somebody, and, and they're still, you know, like a couple, three years later, they're still holding on to that, and they can't let it go and move on. So that's basically it. Or if you've lost somebody in your life, a spouse or whatever, and they're gone, and you just, after a certain amount of grieving, there's got to be a time to let go, you know? On the other side of the coin, um, there's this, this song called See You on the Other Side on the album, which is about a positive message i got a phone call um about frankie benelli from quiet riot passing Mm -hmm. when that was all happening and and uh right then and there i sat down with the the acoustic 12 string that was sitting next to me and wrote that song top to bottom with the chorus melody and lyric idea and i finished it off with a singer named august young but that phone call brought back all the all the uh the emotions and memory of losing my mom and, and like six of my closest friends over over the years, you know, like the brothers to me are all gone now. So that's what that song speaks to. It's about the hope that, I'll, hey, I'll see you in the, in the next life on the other side. Talking with Chuck Wright, I wanted to talk about It Never Fails. I was listening to it, and I thought, is that Jeff Scott Soto? It's got to be. Sure enough. <laughs> Indeed it is. And you know what? Um, I called him about the song because we've been friends since he was singing for Ingebe Malmsteen, and who was opening for quite right back in the mid eighties. And, um, that's, we've been friends since then, you know, I mean, I, mean, I just saw his son who's like 30 something. <laughs> and I, and I remember the kid being in a stroller, you know what I mean? <laughs> sure. I just saw his son for the first time since then. It was kind of blew my mind. But yeah, the thing about Jeff is, you know, people know him from, from the more hard rock stuff like he does with his Soto album. 
uh, or, or the Sons of Apollo or, or that kind of thing. But I know this guy can sing R and B like great. He's he's amazing. We went and saw Terrence Trent Darby and he sang along every song, you know. <laughs> and he does boogie nights now and then for fun and, and which is a disco type band, but so this song is super funky. It's aggressive funky, but it's super funky, and, and it really needed that kind of vocal. And I, I said, hey, check this out. It already had the vocal melodies and everything. It just needed to be executed with that kind of feel. And a couple hours later, he sent me uh, the vocal tracks. I wouldn't change a thing. They're brilliant. He kicks ass on it. And Scotty uh, Hill from Skid Row does an amazing guitar solo in the middle, too. Kind of reminiscent of maybe Trapeze or something. Oh, you with Glenn Hughes? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that Hughes Thrall Project is one of my favorite albums. Actually, Frankie plays drums on half. They're right. That's yeah, right. I think, I hate to say it, but I think Glenn peaked then. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was, that, how do you top that? That album is so amazing. So I want to go back to Quiet Riot because they were just in the area not that long ago. We're coming up on 40 years since Metal Health came out. What? I know, right? No way. Oh, yeah, 83. Okay, sorry. <laughs> you know, that that really, like, kind of freaks me out, like seeing Jeff's son. It freaks me out how fast time has gone by. And you were actually, because everybody says, oh, there's the picture of Rudy Sarzo. It's kind of like the deal when Rudy joined Ozzy's band, and everybody saw the pictures right. of Rudy, but it was Bob Daisley this and time. Too. Right? <laughs> yep. I always say Rudy's one of the luckiest guys I've ever known. He steps into a band, record's done, and, and it's a huge hit, and he goes off and does these major tours. <laughs> <laughs> but lo and behold, who gets the last laugh? Chuck Wright plays on the title track, Metal Health. Yeah, Bang Your Head, that's a, I, first, I heard that on the radio for the first time, and I was just totally floored. Finally, you know, the bass is mixed loud, and it's, you know what, the first album I ever do in my life, um, and I've done well over 100 or whatever now, but um, just... The fact that you're part of changing the fabric of music at the time, because everything was new wave and, and, you know, the knack and the motels and skinny tights, short haired bands. And all of a sudden, because of Come On, Feel the Noise, which I actually sing on, too. I sing on every track on that album. It totally changed the whole fabric of the music scene. And, and every label wanted a band like, you know, they had long hair, sunset strip rock band, you know. So it, it's interesting to be in a part of history like that. It just went on to, it sold um, over 10 million records and, and I was part of that, you know, um, I'm on it. Yeah, Bang Your Head's me. I know people say, what was his greatest contribution to the band being in it, being your bass track? So I'm like, yeah, that's pretty <laughs> funny. But uh, yeah, it's bittersweet, you know. That's cool. I ended up joining the, the band again in 1987 when he left. And, and uh, I actually sing on the second album, Condition Critical, and I actually play bass on the song, too. Actually, a couple on that album. Um, and then uh, QR3, I was a writer on every song. And I uh, toured with the band until Kevin left the band. Then I left and put together. I did Impelitary with Graham Bonnet, and then I, I uh, and Pat Torpy. Then I did uh, put House of Lords together. Jafria was in the middle of that too at some point. <laughs> <laughs> and you're also yeah, on the song. We joined the band Quiet Ride. I was in Jafria, then I rejoined Quiet Ride. And then you're also on the song Don't Want to Let You Go. I am. And you know what? If anybody listens to that album. You can certainly hear the totally the total different sound and feel of my playing and his playing. You know, I, I totally am more of a feel type player. Now, Chuck, were you were you, were you in before or after Rudy? In the, in the time frame wise, how did how did all that go? Well, there's there's actually a, a, uh, a documentary that was on Showtime for two years called Well Now You Hear There's No Way Back that kind of tells the full story of Quiet Riot. There was a Randy Rhodes version of yes. Quiet Riot yep. with Rudy, who, and again, Rudy came in after the record, the rec recordings were done. <laughs> Correct. With that band. And um, Randy left to go uh, play with Ozzy, and then Rudy came along to go play with Ozzy. And then the band was Dubrow, and I came in and replaced Rudy after he left. So and did all the clubs and did the demos, did everything to get the band signed. I got the band signed. We're doing working on it, and then um, Randy was, as you know, unfortunately uh, devastatingly killed in that plane crash. And then Rudy rejoined the band, um, and I had my own band at the time uh, that was packing wherever we played, and I wrote all the music for it. it was a prog band called Satter. So it was like, okay, so he wants to come back. Okay, honestly. And you can see this in the in the uh, the documentary. There's no way I thought that that album would do it. Do it sure. Did. You know, I just went, whatever. You know, that music's not even in at all, you know. So, bittersweet success, so to speak. 
So that's what happened. And then the reason it became Quiet Riot again was that the label wanted to call the band, um, let me see, it was called, uh, they wanted to name the band Wild Oscar or Standing Hampton. Oh, good grief. Which, they both mean the same thing. Use your imagination. <laughs> right. You know, but, uh, and Kevin said, I remember his, this is no way I'm going to call the band Wild Oscar. Who am I going to be Oscar? Forget that. And he goes, let's just call it Quiet Right again. So that's how that happened. Basically, um, thanks for asking about the album. That's, that's you know, my focus. Still, I'm trying to get the word out, and, and I'm reinvigorated about getting Throwing Stones out there. Um, there is a video for it on YouTube. You can find me on ChuckWright.com, and the, the album is everywhere on Spotify. Uh, it's on YouTube, each song. The labels just put everything out there nowadays, you know. It's, mm -hmm. it's, records are more for promotional purposes than anything, and, and my goal was just, I just want people to hear what I'm about musically. You know, this is no kind of, oh, yeah, I'm going to get rich kind of thing. It's just, let's just get it out there. You know, all these great players just joined me. They, they heard what I was doing and wanted to be a part of it. You know, everybody volunteered and jumped on board. And I'm really proud of everybody's performance and the depth of the songs and lyric. And uh, hopefully people will check it out. Chuck, I want to thank you for your time. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you, man. I'm, I'm uh, nice to meet you, and uh, hope maybe we'll cross paths someday. Let's hope. Chuck Wright, yep. Sheltering Sky, my guest on The Scar Card on 103.7 The Fox.